Hello, this is Lion here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we're going to be talking about fountain pens. And um, it's a topic I don't really talk about that much, but it is more or less one of my big hobbies. It's something that I do often. You know, I use fountain pens every day, uh, or most every day, uh, while I'm at school and stuff. And um, I want to talk about them because my passion for them has been reignited very recently. In fact, like two days ago, I got a new pair of pens uh, in the mail. And uh, it made me really enjoy writing again, and it also made me really interested in more pens. So I'm gonna talk about these two pens, but first of all, for the sake of introducing myself to the pen community, um, <laughs> I do wanna talk about my journey with pens, right? So initially, I was uh, interested in calligraphy in high school, well, middle school and high school, because one of my foreign language classes that I took uh, was one that most people weren't interested in. So our teacher tried to come up with ideas in ways to get us interested. And one of the ways that she thought of was to give us a little module about calligraphy where we would write foreign language words using these new techniques, right? And uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, then shortly I kind of forgot about it. I didn't really uh, keep up with it after I stopped having those classes. Um, and then in high school, uh, no, sorry, in early university, um, after my first year, I found uh, the Goulet Pens uh, YouTube channel uh, with, uh, what's his name? Whatever his name is, you know, the guy Goulet. Uh, I can't remember his first name, but he was talking about a bunch of pens and I was interested. And so I ended up buying a Pilot Metropolitan and I liked it, but it was too skinny for me. It didn't really fit my hand that well. So I kept looking for more pens. Eventually, while I was in Mexico, city uh, visiting some of my family we ended up going to another city called Puebla and there was this special kind of like upper class department store type thing uh, called Sanborns uh, and I bought a Lamy Safari uh, the all black edition which was an amazing purchase I still it's probably one of my favorite pens uh, to date and uh, then when I was back in Mexico City after visiting that that other city um, I bought some more nibs for it. I ended up getting a medium and a broad and I had a fine on it. Um, so I ended up having three nibs and a pen. And then my journey kind of continued. I ended up buying a bunch of different random uh, pens, mostly cheaper ones from uh, eBay, you know, Jin Hao pens. Um, but most of them didn't end up, actually end up being very good pens. Uh, the three pens that I really kind of feel are the pens that I really love that I have in my very small collection. Uh, which you can see somewhere up on the eye, eye screen right now, or on the little eye card, um, are my Metropolitan, which I actually don't really use all that often because the uh, the nib is too fine for me. It's, I think it's too small for my preferences. Um, and the pen is so small, it's kind of hard to hold. Um, the Lamy Safari, which is more or less my everyday writer. And this Wingsun 308, uh, like piston filler, I think is what they're called. Um, where it's like the whole back section of the pen is, is full of ink. Um, and it has this little like uh, corkscrew at the back, right? And I use that one for notes because it has such a big capacity that it's really easy to maintain. And I don't really have to refill it all that often, right? But um, that's kind of my history there. And for like the last three years, I haven't really bought anything uh, in terms of pens, you know, besides some ink. I bought some Iroshoku, uh, Iroshi, Iroshizuku, uh, Takasumi, uh, which is my favorite ink. Um, and uh, it was just to refill because I, I had finished up my my previous bottle. And uh, then I, I saw someone in my class, you know, last week, and they had a fountain pen and it was pretty rare for me to see people with fountain pens. Um, so I asked him, hey man, what type of pen is that? He told me it was a Jin Hao, uh, which I was familiar with because I have a lot of Jin Hao's, um, but it was a model that I'd never seen before. I asked him what it was. He told me it was an X450, which is kind of weird because you would assume I would have seen this uh, before since it is a um, is a pretty standard Jin Hao pen, right? Uh, but I'd never seen it. I think it was because he had like a, a model that didn't have any flourishes on it. It was plain chrome or like aluminum, whatever you know material it's supposed to be. It was just plain stainless steel looking. And then that kind of drove me down this rabbit hole of finding Jin Hao pens. And then I came across these two very beautiful, very um, well-made Jin Hao 80s, which are kind of more or less a Lamy 2000 ripoff. 
and they really reinvigorated my love for fountain pens because these two are amazing, amazing, amazing pens. So uh, this one looks exactly like a uh, Lamy 2000, but the inside of it is actually kind of from a different Lamy. I think it's the Lamy Studio, I think it's what it's called. And so it looks like that. And I really like these Lamy style uh, nibs a lot. And one of them is filled up with uh, diamine ox blood and the other one has Oxford blue also by diamine. And they are immensely satisfying to write with. And so I'm gonna talk about them more, but I wanna show you them uh, up close and personal. So we'll switch over to a different view and then we'll keep talking about them. But these really reignited my love for fountain pens. And I really recommend them if you're someone that's interested in fountain pens that has never tried them. These are super, super good pens. So um, I'll see you guys uh, in the next segment where I have the, the different setup, right? So yeah. Okay, I've never uh, tried to make this angle work. So if it doesn't, I apologize, but uh, hopefully it does. So here we go, let's look at these pens. These are the Jin Hao 80s, like I said, and they really are amazing little pens. So they have this little spring activated thing here, which is cool. Um, they don't have those weird ridges that the Lamy 2000 has. Uh, the pen looks like that. It has like three levels to it, so it caps in correctly. It's made of plastic, although this bit here I think is made of metal. And it has a standard converter, which is pretty nice. And uh, this one specifically has all black detailing on it, which is cool. The silver one is exactly the same. And um, they're really, really good pens. They really awoken my love for fountain pens again after a while um, of not really caring about them too much like i use my lamy safari every day uh and my wing sun 300 it's 3008 i use them every day for notes and stuff like that for school um but they're kind of just like normal things to me right because they're not particularly expensive pens and they're just kind of like what i use they're just my normal everyday tool they weren't really artistic things that i really uh, cared about all that much uh, anymore right but these little pens here really ignited my love for it, everything again because they're so interesting they feel so good and they're just so enjoyable to write with right so this one is the uh Jin Hao 80 sorry if you guys can't see that that well let me see if i can zoom in a bit yeah there you go i think that works better and this one has diamine oxford blue it's really hard to write because I can't hold the pen the normal way because there's a tripod leg in my way. Um, so um, it works though, I guess, so it's fine. Uh, and this other one has Diamine Oxblood, which are my favorite inks. Uh, well, my favorite is uh, the Tagasumi, the uh, pilot one. But uh, Oxford, it, Oxford Blue and Oxblood are my second and third favorite. Uh, actually, Oxblood is two, Oxford Blue is uh, is third. And these are really, really good pens. They're fine nibs, I think. Let me see if I can see them. Yeah, there you go. And they look exactly like Lamy nibs, um, except for some slight differences to them, I think. Yeah, the, the flaring of the head of the uh, nib right there is kind of different. Um, but they're pretty cool. I might get another of these black Lamy nibs to put on there. I have already two more of them. I have a fine and a broad, as well as this medium. I might switch them out, but I actually really enjoy these, uh, the fineness of these. Oh, I capped the wrong thing there. Uh, so let me see if I can show you how different these are. This one has Diamine Earl Grey which was an ink that I didn't really love initially, but I quite like now. Uh, it's kind of a light black. I mean, it's gray, but it's a light black. Um, and yeah, they don't seem that different on camera, but they are pretty different. And the the uh, the paper I'm using is actually kind of interesting because it works really, really well. There's no like crazy flaring uh, on, the, uh, on these, but it is kind of a lame kind of standard uh, pen gear brand, uh, Walmart brand notebook. And um, yeah, I don't know. These are really, really good pens. If you're a beginner and you've only kind of come across this video for, for a random reason and just got shown to you, uh, this Jin Hao 80 is honestly an amazing pen to be 
to begin with because it's immensely cheap. You can get a set of two for $14, which means each pen is seven, which, you know, if you're kind of starting out, $7 for a pen feels like insane. But uh, realistically, most fountain pens are like $30. Uh, and most of them actually end up going up to like $800, depending on the type of pen they are. So uh, it's kind of interesting to kind of uh, to kind of see that. Um, but these are really, really good pens. I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like I'm rambling here. It wasn't really supposed to be a review. Uh, so I'm just kind of doing these things that I see people that do reviews do. Uh, but it's mostly just to have a background thing while I talk, right? So uh, yeah, let's do a panogram or whatever they're called. Let's do uh the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, I think is what it's supposed to be. And uh, I can't write in cursive. <laughs> uh, I write in this kind of weird like uppercase block uh, lettering that I kind of came up with after I realized that my handwriting was horrible and I needed something different. To a different one here, Sphinx of Black Quartz, uh, Judge, My Vow. This one is much cooler than the first one. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't know. So I'm kind of rambling here, so I think I'll end it, but really good pens. Honestly, if you're a fountain pen collector and you've kind of lost the love for fountain pens or kind of just feel like they're kind of just like normal objects to you now and you want something different, uh, definitely check out this Jin Hao. I know it's a knockoff. I know people don't like it, but honestly, these are immensely well-crafted pens. They're super affordable. Even if they are kind of knockoffs, I think it's well worth um, the kind of moral dilemma there because they're not exactly knockoffs. They're kind of more like amalgamations and recreations and kind of modifications on the original model. And the shape is awesome. The weight of it is awesome. And I really want to get more Jin Hao pens. I know that the X159 is amazing. Uh, a lot of people say it is, so I want to get one of those. And um, it's really exciting to be kind of reinvigorated about a hobby that I kind of felt kind of went to the wayside for me emotionally, right? So it's really awesome. And uh, honestly, thanks Jin Hao for that because these are amazing pens and they really made me very happy. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys. Uh, you know, in another two years when I decide to make another fountain bed video. So yeah, thank you guys and uh, see you guys next time.